Hey everyone, welcome to the Receipt Podcast. This week brought to you by MeUndies, Squarespace, and Stamps.com. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Blaine. I'm Chris. And I'm Gus. What's up with that voice? I don't know. I was trying it out. You're doing, it out. A, you're doing a voice over there too. Chris. Stop. Come here. Oh. It's a shadow, Blaine. It's oh, a shadow. No. No, he's got white crumbs, probably cum or something. What, what, do, you, what do you have on you, Chris? Uh, it might have been like, I don't know what this is. Did you have a bicky? <laughs> Looks like toilet paper. I don't know how I got what? I walked into Sometimes the- Sometimes when I blow my nose, did you, did you ever get toilet paper stuck in your, like, little beard, uh, hair? You, you don't have a beard right now, Chris. Perfectly perfectly no, no, but then, that's- face. No, feel it. It gets happening all the time. See, it's I scratchy. heard that! See? Yeah, I heard it. So right, it gets- right, it, right. I blow my nose, and then it gets, like, toilet paper <laughs> caught in it, and then I, like, swipe it off, and it ends up looking a little- I think that's the grossest part about mustaches that people might not think about. Bogies? Yeah, it's like when you blow your nose, you're- you're really <laughs> just- Filling your mustache with boogers. I had the weirdest thing happen to me the other day. I think I was just tired. I've been filming a lot. I did a number two. It was a just an average two. What was done with it? Went to wipe. Got some toilet paper, and I wiped my eyes. Like what? Like, like a hard <laughs> wipe. I was just like, oh, I'm done. I'm done with this poo. What am I doing? What am I doing? Just, I just, I hoped that it wasn't like used first, no. and then. Well, thankfully, I hadn't got to where it counts first. But I was just like. Damn, that's, I'm confused. That is, that's tired. Yeah, have you ever done that? Uh, there was one time where I remember I was like taking a pee and then I kept rummaging in the bath mat because I thought I dropped a Django Fed action figure and I was there for like three minutes just like scratching at the carpet that's at my feet and I was like, where's my Django Fed action figure? And then I woke up and I was like, what am I doing? It was a dream? Uh, it was like a, it was like a dream where I was like sleepwalking. Oh, you were really there? I was really there. Mm. Yeah. And then I like woke up okay. and I was like, why am I looking for a Jango I was gonna Fett ask why you figure? had a Django Fett action figure with you while you were peeing. I don't know, but Dream Blaine seemed to Yeah. <clears throat> Dreams are so weird. Fucking weird. Yeah. I feel like I, I mentioned this the other day on the podcast, but I feel like I've been remembering my dreams less since I started using my CPAP. Uh which is kind of a bummer for me because I really I, I really liked my dreams. I really had weird dreams. Were they better than your life? Yeah, they were. <laughs> I feel like who's there was like years ago on the podcast. Someone said they didn't like hearing dream stories because they're just stories that weren't a thing. Was that you? I thought no. that was you. I don't like hypothetical questions. Okay, I've, I, I've always wait. been reluctant to talk about my dreams on the podcast because I felt like no. it was either you or Bernie was like, I don't want to hear about your fucking dream. It no, didn't happen. I have had someone in my life who always talks about their dreams. And uh, sometimes if I'm not in the mood to listen to a dream, I just have to be like, I'm, I'm gonna stop you right there. I don't care about the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me later because it will matter to me more. But right now I'm thinking about stuff and a dream is nothing. <laughs> well, it's interesting when someone tells you about the dream if you were in it. But if it's just a dream about stuff, then it's like, I don't care. It, yeah, because if there's something to be deciphered from the dream, then I'm all about There's that. nothing ever to decipher from a dream, dude. No, there sure it's is. Always just, you don't what what does the Django Fett figure mean in your dream? Uh, I love Star Wars. <laughs> Really. It's, just, it's so literally just deciphered that. It's just random firings of your and brain. Stress. You can, you can find out you're stressed about something. Yeah. If you have dreams about if your if your shit like your teeth are like melting. That's or the only stress I ever have. It's like I start spitting up shards of my teeth. Yeah. yeah. See. Oh, have you ever exactly. have you ever had it? I had a dream one time where I had like earwax coming out of my ear and it just wouldn't stop coming out and I was like, what is going on? And I was in a cool. classroom and everyone was looking at me and I had all this earwax just spewing from my ear and I was freaking out and I was like, this is the most embarrassing thing I've ever had in my life. I showed you that picture of that earwax that came out of my ear during Arizona Circle production, right? No. It was like a huge fucking glob. Like and He was showing it everyone. He was like his I newborn was... baby. <laughs> like, look what happened over the w Look at this. It was like, I was like very careful about showing it to people. I didn't want to be That's like, That's not true hey. at all. I, I would say, hey, do you want to see something gross? And if they said yes, then I'd be like, ah. So there's a difference. When yeah. we filmed, I, I've had big ear wax like that, but re more recently. Do you want to see mine? Um, <laughs> Sure, I want to see it. When we were filming that, it's been a few years, but when we were filming that, Immersion on the racetrack uh, mm -hmm. out in Georgia for some reason a lot of people got sick on that shoot We all a lot of us had colds and I had a terrible cold and one morning before call time I was taking my shower. I was like I had turned the shower on I was getting ready to get in the shower and I coughed up the biggest most disgusting Booger of my life. <laughs> it was almost the size of the palm of my hand and it was so gross, like, I had to take a photo of it, you know, like, to document it, and I, that's what I would show people, like, you want to see something gross? And I would show them, like, how did you cough that up? Was there, like, blood in it and <laughs> No, stuff? just normal. That looks like a frog, dude. It looks like a little frog sitting <laughs> on the tip it? of your finger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, it looks like a. Oh, it looks like a bug. <laughs> it's so Chris. <laughs> it. it does look like a pet. The different. It looks like colors a, it does, in there. It looks like a it's frog like a, sitting it, on your finger. It looks, it looks like, like a cinnamon <laughs> roll. It's like an entire palette. It's like uh. it's like autumn came out of your ear. <laughs> Were you there when I showed the one the doctor took out of my ear? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's this one of you, the thing you coughed up? I was trying to find it. That sounds great. It's I love seeing that shit. Few years. Someone has to talk while I, while I look that up. What came out of you this week, Chris? <laughs> uh, lots. What was that? that was Nothing out of the ordinary, though. It's all pretty stand <laughs> <laughs> standard, you know. I, uh, I shoved Dan in a balloon again. I saw uh, that. Oh, yeah. Well, I just do that every June now. Giant balloon June. Giant balloon cool June. It. What was the catch on this one? Or are you allowed to talk about it? Uh, it's, it's, it's smaller than I remember. Oh my <laughs> god! Oh, dude, that's that that's that fucking Robin Williams movie. That's Blubber or whatever. Blubber, <laughs> Flubber. That's fucking Flubber, dude. That looks like a grape with rock. Oh. Dude, we should we should introduce your booger to Blade's ear <laughs> ear frog. Hey, look, you can see the toilet in the background. Oh there. my <laughs> god! I just I was getting ready to get in the shower. Wait, 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 wait. If you're in the shower, why was it in your hand? No, I said I was getting ready to get in the shower. Like, oh. I just turned the shower up. <laughs> so and I, I, like, sneezed or coughed. Into and... your hand? <laughs> I don't know. I was over half asleep. Just goes in the bog. Oh. <laughs> 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 Pretty gross. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't throw up. We don't have your, we don't have your Did, vomit trash can I have anymore. a question. Did you? How did you search for that? Did you? Well, I remember it was 2013, so I went back, and we did that like in April. So I went back to that approximate okay. date. Right He's now. lying. He's favorited that. He loves it. So I'll look for stuff by locations. I'll go to the map, mm. like the map, I, and be like, because I would have gone to Atlanta and then looked and well, be like, oh yeah, there's only 30 photos in Atlanta. I went to a long period of time through a long period of time where locations were disabled on my photos, mm. so um, I, I couldn't. I can't do that. It's, it's fairly recent because there was a long time where. Um, if you posted photos to social media, they wouldn't strip GPS data out. Oh. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so I would just have my phone not attach any GPS data to be safe. I wonder where my weirdest, uh... Weirdest things come out of your body? No, weirdest, like, photos, location tags are from... Oh god, there it is. God. Oh, <laughs> god. Don't look at my screen this week! <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop thinking of Flubber coming out of his... King Eatable in chat is, is that, asking is that the for worst? me to show it. Is that what the, is this chat? This has nothing to do with what we're talking about. <laughs> this what are they talking about? Is this just not so, live? I think that's a little sc scrolled up. Can we scroll down? It might have been like I think that's a little delayed. Someone from broadcast is like, send it to me. It's Dr Eric or Dennis. Send oh, yeah, it to me. They're just not chat's just talking about jizz. They, they dry jizz on my shirt. Oh, <laughs> oh I just hit myself the balls. <laughs> Dude, did you, oh, you see that gift of that guy? Yeah. <laughs> Can we show that? What happened? There was a, there was a, huh? <laughs> Eric, what? You've, you've hit Eric with your, your frog. <laughs> Should Eric, I send him my earwax? Eric's not happy. Eric, do you want to see my earwax too? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> oh my god! Why don't show me that? <laughs> don't show it, I showed it for you guys. That was private! <laughs> Who is this? Sombras in chat is saying you can hold up to 1.5 ounces in your sinuses. That's cool. 1.5 seems like a lot. Human body is pretty dope. What, what is, what is the worst that's a shot? What's the worst place for stuff to come out of? <laughs> if it's solid, I'll say your pee hole. Eric, here you go. Oh, oh dude, yeah, like a kidney stone. Yeah, that's probably that's probably the worst. There's what? not really a lot of places stuff can come out. Maybe belly button. Yeah, but, yeah. No, but <laughs> Eric got it. Just come out of your belly button. What? I guess your butt. What? <laughs> Stuff's supposed to come out of your butt. Yeah, no, there it, it is. Can, it can there it is, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's that came out of my fucking ear. <laughs> Chad, Stop it. Chad is, Put it away. Chad is Chad is not happy. Not safe for life. Uh, everyone needs to just keep their shit in. Uh, so I well, I had a huge chunk of ear. God, I just like it was Arizona Circle production, and I was like. Getting really fucking sick like the week before I just shoot the shirtless scene because it was actually fortuitous timing But I got like an intestinal flu. Oh, you flu. got super sick. Yeah, I was like he, it was coming out everywhere. That's you had vomiting and I was oh. vomiting and I was barfing. That, like, that's when you missed the talking shit shoot. Yeah. 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 And the first the first time in my life I vomited in, in 
pooed at the same time. Oh, okay. If you if you, not if you saw get fact the the Australian one where you were, you had the animal in the cage, you filmed the that child. That's what I meant. <laughs> the cage, the child in the cage that was meant to be like an animal. Anyway, Blaine had Blaine had came up for work just to shoot that, and was horribly sick. I look horribly. like a fucking ghost. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, so I was just getting sick and like everything was coming out of my body and then like yeah I remember my one of my ears. I thought it was an, I was infected or something because I couldn't hear out of it So then like I had this little plunger thing that I would just spray hot water into my ear Like every day and like for three or four days I would do this and then eventually it was just like a fucking like avalanche happened to my ear where I just heard like <coughs> And I was like, oh god. Was it while you were squeezing the thing? No, it, uh, it might have I don't think it was it might have been it might have been <laughs> But anyways, I just remember like, oh god, it's coming, it's coming, and I just heard like, oh yeah, yeah, oh, oh, and it was just like the greatest right. orgasm could out of my hear, ear. Could you could you feel like you could hear everything I, after I that? I could hear my neighbor's cat from five <laughs> doors down. It was astonishing. But then immediately I was like, my left ear, I'm deaf in my left ear now, <laughs> and I was just like, uh, uh. yeah, I only had it come out of my ear as liquid, but it was a lot once. It was on a, I think it was on a slow mo shoot. We were shooting. Like a crossbow. I think you were helped help me do that. We should, like, oh, the Dr. Pepper thing? That when Brandon almost killed you with a loaded crossbow. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. That's about right. And um, <laughs> he, was just, he was just like, no, 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 no. I was like, it's loaded. And you were like bent over, like resetting <laughs> the thing. And I was like, oh my I God. I had visions of a, a crossbow bolt just going into Chris's anus. Oh my. And, and I remember being like, it's loaded. He was like, oh. And you were like, what the f- <laughs> <laughs> How can you not tell if a crossbow's loaded? It's he, pretty apparent. Now, to be fair to Brandon, when he was messing with it like 20 seconds earlier, it wasn't loaded. Hmm. The guy who owned it just came over and loaded it, like, and didn't tell anyone. So he was just like, readjusting it. And Are you like the only one who saw him load it? I didn't see him load it either, I just saw that it was loaded. Oh. Because I was like, Chris is oh down range. God. There was a moment where we were all just yeah. like, Alright, nobody load the crossbow. Because it could kill you. It oh, could yeah. Have easily I mean, killed you. The oh, that's whole, what they were the, used for. The whole bit that we were filming was the crossbow shooting through like eight things of soda, right? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. That would have gotten through <laughs> it, it's, at least three Chris's. <laughs> that's the reason I, I like just shooting solo these days. Because it's like, we, You're in control we, of it there's all. only two of us. We just know what each other are doing. Sometimes with, there's too many people, it can get dangerous. Anyway, that day, a bunch of earwax just went. <laughs> And like went all down my arm. I was like, "Good lord!" Wow. Because I had had like a blocked ear for a long time, but it came out as liquid. I was like, "That was so warm and satisfying." And <laughs> the gross. Dude, it feels there, amazing. There's uh, like one of those, you know, when you do like 23andMe, like all this DNA testing. That's one of the things that they try to test for is whether you have wet earwax or dry earwax. I actually now I'm gonna why, look into mine because mine's solid as shit. It, why is it that things coming out of your body feel so good? Well, that's uh, a, that's babies, a really interesting Chris. Question. Well, like an ingrown hair feels amazing to pull out. Yeah, or, or like, or, or like poo. does it? Or like a good, a good like, like, I mean, you have to pee. It feels great if you have to really have to pee or ejaculate or or a good poop. Like, did you just say ejaculate? Yeah. I I feel like it's it's other things unless the actual feeling of jizz punching your saying... urethra open. It's more of like the other <laughs> stuff that comes along. But with any it. any sort of. But Name. it's associated. It goes. It goes hand in hand. Yeah, you can't have one without the other. That's, that's yeah, true. it does go. <laughs> it does go very good, Chris. It goes. No, but like, name one thing coming. I mean, besides a baby. But I bet it feels good afterwards. Yeah, okay. kidney like, stone. Oh, I Likely dry your no. wax. Kidney according to twenty three and me, it's the perfect answer. Yeah. That that does would not be very good. unpleasant. Yeah. You have dry your wax. That's what it said. I mean, that's that's what that was. Mm. Even if you're dehydrated, just a normal piss can hurt. If you've ever been, like, oh yeah, if, you, if you're like super dehydrated, it can be. It'll. How just far did you guys let yourselves go that you were that? Why well, I try? I mean, but if it's just like if you're just like I need more water, you can just tell you're you're like dehydrated. I don't know if it hurts. It's just like not. It doesn't feel as pleasant as like a nice clean piss. <laughs> you I get think, a sound bite of that? A nice clean piss. <laughs> Chat just caught up with our the earwax in their. Uh... Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. It's that's way behind. Uh, can we refresh that or? Get it further down or something. Yeah, I'll work on it now. Thanks, man. Um, Thanks, Eric. Man, I had I had a, a weird experience the other day. Go on. I I was at a, a Korean restaurant and I, was, uh, I went in to go place a to go order. And so I go in, I place my order, and I sit down kind of near the front by the door. And like I'm not paying attention. I'm using something. I'm looking at my phone, looking at Twitter, or Instagram, or something. And someone walks in. I'm only vaguely aware. They were, they were really busy at this restaurant. So there's people coming in and out. There's a lot, last time I'm not really paying attention. Some guy walks in and I hear him ask, or I see like the, the employee 
go up and say, you know, can we can we help you? And he says, uh, can you give me a glass of water? And they, they, they don't speak English. That guy didn't speak English totally well. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, like, there's a misunderstanding. He's like, then the guy who walked in says, can I just have a glass of water? All I want is a glass of water. So the, the guy who, who was working there leaves, walks off, and someone else comes up. And the guy at the door again is like, can I have a glass of water? And they're not understanding what it is that he wants. The person he's talking, the employee he's talking to leaves again. And I look up and it's, uh, it looks like it's, um, you know, maybe like a homeless guy or a guy who's like backpack. He's got a backpack on. looks like he's been walking outside. looks, he's sweating. I can understand why he wants a glass of water. And he looks at me and goes, hey, can you help me just get a glass of water? And I, I look down and I realize I'm dressed like the employees. Like I'm wearing like a black shirt and black slacks. And I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, I don't actually work here. And he goes, I didn't ask you if you worked here. I asked you if you could help me get a glass of water. I was like... Um, I've been like, well, now, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, like the employee comes back out and, and they're just trying to figure out what it is that he wants. They're like, you want a to go cup with water? And he goes, well, I guess if that's all I can get, yeah. It's like, but they're not understanding him. They're just trying to figure out what it is that he wants to get it for him. Uh, so then the first employee he was talking to comes back out with a glass of water and hands it to him and he drinks it and leaves. And I was like, what the fuck was that? Why did the guy get mad at me? I, I can't. <laughs> I can speak English like he can. Like, I'm not going to be able to tell these people anything more. Maybe he thought because you were actually sitting there and not like, didn't look like a backpacker, that they might give you a water and not him. Well, I also wondered if he thought like I could speak Korean to them or something. Oh. (laughs) It's like, I was like, what? Like, I was like, what what was the point of that conversation? Like, there was, uh, it caught me by surprise. And then I didn't know what to do. So were you mad after the interaction was over? Were you well, like, I, was, I, was like, I was like, well, why did he talk to me like that? I, was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I honestly thought he thought I was working there. I always get confused when people who you're doing a favor for get mad at you when you don't do it well enough. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think I was with Jeff in his car once, so we picked up this, well, what I assume was just, just a scam guy. He was like a blind guy, like fumbling oh, around Oh, that street. guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's uh, West Campus. Yeah, yeah and we, we dropped him off, and he was like, yeah, I need to pay this like fine that I've got and Jeff like lent him the money for it and it was like 20 bucks or something and then and then the guy was like well 20 bucks plus tax <laughs> and Jeff was like well <laughs> and I was like why why is he being so rude like he expects it the full amount well so you well, forgot yeah yeah that, it's not just 20 that, bucks dude that guy's well known around Austin he runs that scam yeah there's a lady is he going to the school of the blind that's where he normally goes yeah, I, don't I know. know exactly that guy yeah there was a lady at one of the intersections that I hit on my way home, and I in my in the back of my Jeep I have a, a bunch of peanut butter crackers because I don't like handing out money because I don't know where it's going to go to, but I no problem handing out food. So, uh, you know, anytime I run into a panhandler, I'll give them some food and stuff like that, and normally have like a small chat with them. They're always really nice about it. But there's this one lady, and she just like cusses me on each time I try to give her crackers. She's like, "I want your fucking crackers!" And I'm like, I don't know what you want from me. Uh, <laughs> It's not your crack. Yeah, you're not my crackers, I guess. It's not, not a great interaction. Remember that there was this one lady who would always like get naked and masturbate downtown? Did you oh, ever see her? No. Wait, is she like I think she's still out there. Where is this? Where's the exact just on, like, address? Sixth Street. She was just like every time what I've seen her a couple times. You just walk by and there's this like lady who's like just naked. She'll she'll pull up masturbating. In, what, in, in like in a car or just on the bench on the street, or what? just standing on the street. up. Uh, I think she'll be sitting down. Yeah. Oh, she got arrested recently, right? I think I read about that Maybe. in the newspaper. She was She's like done it a bunch. on the patio at the Austonian or something. It's always yeah, it's always somewhere downtownish. Yeah. It's a bummer. So she has she like a was it when you're addicted to sex? An an maniac? Maniac? Or maybe like an exhibitionist. Maybe she's just exhibitionist. <clears throat> That's usually by choice though. It's not like a compulsion to or is it? I don't well, know. Well, no, but an exhibition is like you get off by doing it in public oh. or like showing it, doing it in front of people. I don't know. Or maybe she just didn't have anywhere else to do it. <laughs> Nowhere else. Yeah. God damn. Chris, whenever I walked into the makeup place over there, you were carrying a <clears throat> tuft full of hair, and I noticed you were giving yourself a haircut. What are you doing there? Wait, 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 wait. We just talked about barbers last week. Yeah. Were you giving yourself a haircut? Yes. What did you tell yourself that you wanted? I wanted you. If you recall from last week, I said the barber did a really bad job where, where they were in a hurry, so they didn't cut it evenly. So that I'll have I'll find random long hairs that I'm like, what is this? So I'll just cut it down. So I was just, I was just trimming up some long hairs, like a, like a good amount in his hair. Oh yeah. Oh, it was a big chunk off the bangs, just some bangs. It looks good. Yeah. 
Well, it looks good now because I've been giving myself. <laughs> I did it all, all weekend. I was like, oh, there's some long hairs, but and I was like, yeah, all weekend I was cutting my hair. Let, let's, let, let me look at let me look at the sides. <clears throat> all right, let's see the other side. The, right. the sideburns are not even though. I don't. Oh, think. I doubt they are. Wait, wait, let, let me. Let's, no, they're not. That yeah, one looks no, long. Yeah. That one looks. I'm sure, yeah, I don't. Oh, oh, that's gonna it's bug the right, shit out of me now, okay. Chris. Uh, it well, here, I'll, I'll only face this way. I don't. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, there, that's go. an interesting decision to make, Chris. Why not the other way? The other way seems to make more sense because you'd be facing us. Yeah, but this is easy. Well, because it's hard. <laughs> not... <laughs> well, I can do. You can do the whole podcast facing away from us if you want. Is this not weird too? Like, Chris, I... you don't have to turn your whole body, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you can just turn your head. Like this, but now I'm facing away from the camera. Okay, how about this, Chris? Turn the chair. The entire chair. Don't turn the chair. <laughs> what? Like that? And turn your head. No, don't turn the okay, chair. Okay, they're yelling at me. I'm not going to turn the chair, guys. I Get think home. you should turn the chair. It's not uncommon for me to just dunk on Chris a lot. And we were getting a drink the other night. And I, I love Chris. Of, of all the people that I work with, I think Chris is one of my favorites. <clears throat> That's kind of fucked up. Wow. We're, we're he's, right, he's we're right of... here. Yeah. I, no, I appreciate you guys too, but I oh, work thanks, with Blaine. Chris the most. And we were getting a drink the other night with some other bunch of Chris's friends because he has those apparently. Uh, and I had just gotten done insulting him about <laughs> something about the United States flag because there was a flag. And I was like, hey, Chris, what does you know, this represent? You know, the 13 stripes and whatever. And he, he got it wrong. And I was like, I was right. What, I did, what did you say? What do the 13 stripes on the flag represent? Chris? 13 colonies. What were the. Uh, Oh shit! No, is this the stars? The stars, fifty states. Baby. No, but like the in the original. Oh, the original thir- with the, the circle. How many stars were there on that? Thirteen colonies. Is thirteen stripes thirteen stars? I don't know. I Why? can't. Well, I, I well, get to your story. Anyways, I was I I had just finished shitting on Chris, <clears throat> and then I was laughing, and in the middle of laughing, my entire beer, <laughs> like as if magic, just completely dumped and just spilled all over my lap. <laughs> It's like it instant looked, karma, dude. It was instant karma, and I was not even mad. I was like, I totally had that coming because I've just been shitting on Chris this whole time, <laughs> and I just, I, it looked like I pissed my pants. Oh yeah, and then Blaine was like waiting. He wanted to leave, and he's like, but I can't get up and leave until it dries enough to where it doesn't look like piss. <laughs> and I'm like, you're leaving. Who cares? Well, yeah, just plus, own it. Plus, also like, if you're walking around confidently, like not trying to hide That's it, that right. no one's gonna assume it's piss. So, like, to- if you're trying to hide it, then it's like, yeah. oh, the guy pissed his pants. I told him. I told him. I was like, dude. You should go and try and talk to some girls because you're gonna seem so confident if you go up looking like you pissed your pants. <laughs> you're like, wow, that guy's that guy's confident, or he's really drunk or high. They sure. would think that too, yeah. But like, it feels like, yep, yeah, looks like I pissed my pants, and it's a it's a funny. But conversation. I didn't. It's a but nice I did. Breaker. It's a funny conversation starter. Yeah, hey, I'm out, I'm out hey of Gavin. the game. I'm so, what? Hey, Gavin. Yeah. Is Chris's uh, sideburns bothering you that much? Because I have. Do you want to cut my hair on a vibrator? I'm just saying we can. If you want to even them out, do you think you could? <laughs> well, Blaine's closer. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, I, Blaine, can you even those out? Sure. Oh my wait, god. Wait, 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 wait. Just, just to clarify, what has this razor been used on? Who can say? Does it matter though? Like, if, if I no, just, no. if I'd done I done no, pubes no, no, no. and then I gave it to your hair, would you be like, Ugh, pubes? yes, I would? Because Why? I, I, what are you doing? Hold it still. <laughs> I'm trying to compare the size. This is how I end up with no sideburns. This is gonna be up to my. Can don't, we do don't like, fuck him up? Why don't yeah. we have? Gonna hold this. What side are you doing? We this? should take a screenshot of Chris's side. one that Blaine this has to match. This is the short side, dude. The other side's the long side. This is the long side. Look at the length. No, of the that's hair. the short that's one. That's the short side, you idiot. No, you're not, this is do you the not short know what side. you're looking at? All right, we we need a reference for Blaine because he's apparently completely blind. Are you talking about the length down? We're yeah. talking the about the length. Out. That's all we've ever said. That one's longer than the other. We're not talking about the width. Come here! You're looking at the camera, which is reversed. <laughs> what? Wait, <laughs> He's okay. looking at your right, face. Hold, hold this. No, that's Thanks the short side. That's the ro- okay. All right. <laughs> it looks like, you're, <laughs> it looks like gonna... you're trying to give a dog a haircut that doesn't want a haircut. Give him some spray cheese. Oh, that's not, that's not a bad job. This, this is the ASMR portion of the podcast. <laughs> It's oh, that's pretty good. Really, that's pretty good. Okay, and turn back. That's about as close as yeah. we can get. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> is that our first live haircut on the podcast? I think it is. You need a Venmo, right? Oh, yeah, except for extra life. That, Dude, I found a clip. Can I? 
I found that clip from. I was oh, going through man, my. I don't want to. Uh, okay, I won't do it. You just showed Flubber in the earwax thing. What? That, that like I'm ashamed of. Uh, hold on, let's talk about that in a second. Let me okay. read this and we'll we'll talk about that. All right. Uh, I'm gonna remind everyone this episode of Receive Podcast is brought to you by MeUndies. Me <laughs> what do 90% of us have in common? It's underwear. You probably spend about 90% of your life in underwear, so don't you think you owe it to yourself to make sure you're wearing the softest undies in town? That's why I only wear Me Undies. It's true. Every pair of underwear I own uh, is Me Undies. It's so comfortable, so soft. Uh, there's really no going back to any other kind of underwear. Uh, plus, they all have a bunch of super cool styles. Uh, MeUndies uses the coveted micromodal fabric, which is a full three times softer than cotton. Not only will you feel like your loins are being hugged by joy itself, but MeUndies gives you multiple style options for both men and women. Men can now try the new boxer brief with fly, which is the same great cut as the boxer brief, but now with an added option for guys who prefer going through the gate versus over the fence. Uh, I'm an over-the-fence guy myself. Uh, MeUndies is the go-to for the softest loungewear on this side of the Rio Grande. Hang out in their super comfy lounge pants and onesies. Yes, MeUndies makes onesies, and they're incredible. So to get 15% off your first pair of free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. Thank you, MeUndies, for not only for sponsoring the podcast, but for making some super comfortable underwear that I really love. So you found, you were go- how did you find it? You are going through your camera? Or you're going through your like, oh, files I, was, I, I ran out of space on my Google Drive, so I was like deleting th- videos because videos are, uh, you know, yeah, more take, space. Take and I was space. like, yeah, it was a clip from uh, Extra Life 2015, but it was like, was that it 2015? 2016? No. It was that, the Cheese Master. Oh, that was 2016. 16, 16 or 17. 16. Anyway, it was just, a, it was like a random clip from the Cheese Master where, where we were building the beard. Well, George, si- you the double downs. Play it. Oh, I guess I could send it to. Can I? Sh- can no, you? I don't want. Don't fucking fly that. Anyway, it was, it was like I, I, the whole night's embarrassing. <laughs> what I'm, what <laughs> if you do this? To go, just don't look. If you want to. No, no, I, I won't do it. Only it, if you're no, It's not nothing. I, like, I don't like, mind crazy. you where to post. I, I don't want to fucking watch it again. Yeah. I already have to watch it when you send it. I feel like. You own every single thing you do, except cheese monster. Well, the, the, the one and, thing and you have what shame I, what about. I, what I've said was, I felt the reason I feel shame about it is I made it about me and not about the charity, and like I, oh. I was disrupting, uh, but other other stuff. I don't think. But I think that, I think you that, brought that's just how that's you know feel it, about you it. brought in. So you kept that stream like the so energy. alive in the energy at like four a.m. <laughs> like you did. It was actually a really positive thing. Right, but it's just I didn't want to be yeah. taking taking other people's stuff over. That's the only reason I feel bad about it. It was just a clip of 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 us making a beard sandwich it's, where Gus is like tackles. Bl- well, it's like it's like me. It's me and Chris are off to the side, and I, I've got two pieces of bread. And I'm exp- I'm setting up what's going on. I'm like, so I'm over here, and I've got two pieces of bread, and I look off camera, and I'm like. Oh no! <laughs> and, then, and then from out of nowhere, Gus just fucking body slams me into the table, and he's like, "Oh, sandwich!" <laughs> I was like, "Okay, Gus." Yeah, it was uh, not you, great. We do get you do get pretty tackly when you're really drunk. <laughs> was, like we had we had a little tackle wrestle in the hotel room once, didn't we? And I, yeah, and I had to wake up early for a flight the next morning. <laughs> I was sore as fuck. I couldn't remember why. I was like, "Oh right, I was fighting Gavin last night." <laughs> Dude, do you ever wake up from like a night of drinking or or whatever and your legs just fucking kill? Yeah. Like do you just not know how to walk when you're drunk or do you am I, I just, just it's like, like, like part- you've worked out a lot and it's like aching from that? Yeah. It's probably I've bad had- sleep and partial dehydration. It's, it's probably dehydration. Sleep. Yeah. My, but no, like-, like my knees are hurting. It must be from dancing. That might be it too. Because I get I get oh, like really dancing. low to the Yeah, yeah, where you're, you're going up and down. <laughs> no, I definitely don't dance. Dude, my knees fucking kill after a night of drinking. So th- that could be like your new workout. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've had that where it's like it's a bit owie to go up the stairs as if I've just been doing exercise, but yeah. I haven't. I've just been drinking. <laughs> so the opposite of exercise. Yeah. I, I wonder if I, it's like I carry myself in a different way when I'm drunk. So I'm like trying to look more like you're trying to be sober, <laughs> like you're using yeah. your muscles all weird. Yeah. Dan's been staying with me. It's always a pleasure when Dan's around. Um, right just interesting on. problems that oh, I didn't think would happen. He was like, man, the water tastes funny here. And I was like, oh, you've been drinking out of the tap? He's like, no, no, I just got it out of the fridge, like the filter thing, and he showed it to me, and he was drinking out of a candle. What? <laughs> what, 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 what? What does that mean? It was a candle that completely burnt away, but there was still, like, <laughs> like bits of wax, and there was, like, glitter in the bottom, and he thought it was a glass to drink out of. Or did he not look in it? No. <laughs> <laughs> what happened over there? <laughs> I was laughing, <laughs> <laughs> and I spit up my beer. 
Oh, do we have the wide of that? I didn't see it. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, oh man. <laughs> what did you tell him? <laughs> I can just imagine his like straight face, like, oh, it tastes awful. It tastes like, I'm just like, what are you for? Like, you don't know how to find a cup and drink out of it? Was he, like, where was it? He was like, it was just something on the table. Oh, <laughs> you didn't even look for a clean glass, you just found something on the fucking table and was like, that's good enough. And what, what it look- was is that it was in his room and he didn't feel like going all the way to the kitchen. To but, like rummage around the dark, so he just took the one that was in his room <laughs> and just went to the fridge and filled it. You had to go to the kitchen to he fill it anyway. <laughs> yeah, he just drank out of an old, dusty old like <laughs> candle. Even a cup I find, I'm gonna rinse it out because right. I might have dust and. Yeah, stuff. so do I. I mean, I'm gonna like start hiding all my vases and stuff. I don't own any vases, but <laughs> if gonna, I did, I would. He's gonna get like one of your cats and be like, "The, the glasses here scratch a lot." <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> Drinking water out of your cat. I I saw someone pull a Dan. He got, he got scratched by the cat. Well. <laughs> I gotta play. I can't show the footage, but I guess I can play the sound. <laughs> There's Dan. There he is. He <laughs> Dan lost weight. Uh, it weirdly looks like he has a tan line for a bikini there. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> oh yeah, he was he was saying about that. <laughs> he was saying about how the sun hits him now. It's just like he sort of shades <laughs> himself. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Anyway, uh, he made the, you know, you know, like when someone is shocked and hurt at the same time, and the, you, you're not ready to yell. Like in movies, when it's like you get attacked, it's like ah. But in reality, you you might have your vocal cords in like a different place, or and it doesn't sound as, you know, butch. This is the noise Dan made when he got attacked by my cat. He kicked it in the head, by accident. <laughs> so he was running up the stairs, but he, he was holding something so he couldn't look down. Uh, so he just like knocked into Smee, who was just sat on the stairs. And then he gave it a little rub on the head, and Smee was just like, <laughs> Nope. Nope. And he just like swatted his leg and he went, <laughs> <laughs> oh. He is just a barrel of laughs. I saw, I saw someone order coffee Dan Gretchen style this weekend. <laughs> I was at a coffee <laughs> shop. And I walked in, and there was a there was a small line. There were two people ordering. Then there was another dude kind of standing off to the side. So I like I kind of got behind all of them. The two people who were ordering, they get their order in. The guy who's kind of off to the side deals with the first two people. Then looks at the guy who's off to the side and goes, "Are you done? Are you ready to order now?" She sounded kind of annoyed with him. I was like, "That's kind of a weird thing." He must have been standing there a while or something, like looking at the menu. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, he goes, "Yeah, I know what I want." He steps up to the bar and he goes, "I want a latte cappuccino." <laughs> and she just kind of put her head down and goes, do you want a latte or do you want a cappuccino? <laughs> and were they next to each other they, they on, were, the it the, the, on the menu, they're the same price. So it says latte slash cappuccino oh. and then the price. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, and in terms of the drink, they're almost the same well, anyway. I think I mean, cappuccino has foam. Yeah. Has more foam. Yeah. <laughs> but she just seems defeated. She's like, do you want a latte or do you want a cappuccino? <laughs> yeah. And he goes, Latte. <laughs> <laughs> it just made me think about Dan just reading across the menu. <laughs> to be fair though, if you're not into coffee and you try and get into coffee, it's like, hey, I'm someone who goes to Starbucks now. It's intimidating. Yeah, I don't know what any of that shit is. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But it, the weird part to me was he had purposely stepped to the side and studied the menu. <laughs> and like, that's I, oh, what he'd come so up sorry, with. Because he was stood there. He's like, I've got this. I'm going to nail it. I'm gonna, I know exactly what I want. And then he got up to the front and messed it up. And I bet he was like, <laughs> I want a hamburger cheeseburger. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me. Did you see? Did you ever uh, watch like videos on public freakout on Reddit? Uh-uh. There was uh, it's like people just losing their shit in public. There was one recently where this guy was walking. He had walked up to the drive-through window at Wendy's because I guess they had given him. He had ordered a hamburger, but they put cheese on it, and he was screaming at them that all cheeseburgers are hamburgers, but not all hamburgers are cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> how, yeah. how disappointed he was in them that they couldn't figure it out and they couldn't give him a hamburger because he wanted a hamburger, not a cheeseburger. Huh. I've had to do that before. Order a cheeseburger without the cheese. Why? Because that's what they, they, they might have on the menu, a cheeseburger. And I'm like, I don't want I want a cheeseburger but without the cheese. What place has only a cheeseburger and no hamburger? I don't also, know. why wouldn't you want cheese on your burger? Also, why why put that on them? Why not just scrape the cheese out? Because it, it's all melted and gooey. Do you just hate cheese? No, no, I like cheese. I just don't like uh, like basic American cheese because it's too like plasticky and gross. Yeah, I like nice cheese. So you like? Would you bring your own cheese to a, ch- a cheeseburger and replace it? I wouldn't bring my own to. I would just get no cheese. 
Okay. I would, if I was gonna go to somewhere and like cook burgers, I might bring my own cheese. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna do that craft. Singles. What kind of cheese do you like? Craft singles can hit the spot sometimes. Oh, provolone's good. Blue cheese. Provolone sucks, dude. Dude, it's so much better. Than Ameri- Pro- better Pro- than provolone's <laughs> overrated as fuck. Uh, it's I better like than Americans spice. craft singles or something. Oh, it's pepper Jack. Yeah, like pepper Jack is Jack. good. I, basically, it's anything but American. I just don't like American cheese. Oh, Colby. You like Colby? Yeah, 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 yeah. Jack. Yeah. Colby I Jack. Jesus. Cheddar. I'm like, it depends on if it's good cheddar. What about Gouda. American, you put the weird mozzarella? American cheddar sucks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it does. It's very overrated. I felt like I liked like, it when you I was just younger. Have cheddar. Yeah, it's. it's That's now, okay. Yeah, now, I like cheddar more than American. Now cheddar. I'm not even a cheddar fan. I think I'm, I'm starting to wonder like, why do we even have cheddar? I like a sharp English cheddar that you'd find in a Plowman's. Hmm. Yeah, because it has I don't taste. Know what that is. Yeah. What's a Plowman's? It's not plastic. Plowman's lunch. I don't like plastic cheese. You say that like that helps. <laughs> <It's a British laughs> I'm not sure. It's just like a basic, and you could get it in a sandwich too. Plowman's lunch. A plowman's lunch. Uh, oh, plowman's spelled a different way. Is that like a How brand, or is plow? that like a type? Is that like W? A... <laughs> is a plowman like a guy that plows? Is out that, on a wait, farm? is that how you spell plow? Like you plow the? Yeah. Mister what? Plow. What's it? What? Chris? Like a snow plow? You'd you spell P L O W? Yeah. T- tell me you want a beer. Don't. Uh, Plowman's lunch is an English cold meal of bread, cheese, and onions. Is that usually accompanied by butter and pickles? Why do they? Why? Yeah. Why the name? Is it like? I assume people who operated oh, plows. Oh, that was ate delicious. Them. Oh, I would suck that down. That's just a that charcuterie board. Or yeah, whatever. that's not just. That is. That's more than. Pl- uh, pl- that's more than a plowman's meal. That's more than what? More than <laughs> <laughs> That's more than a plow breakfast, right? What were you calling it? What are you calling it? It's a plow breakfast. You nailed it. P L O W breakfast? A plowman? What was it? Yeah. What what did you say a second ago? What I'm you, still trying to figure out say? what a plowman is. Is it just a guy that plows a field? It's a guy who plows a field, dude. So it's like a field hands meal. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if plowman was like a brand or something. I, I assume it's been a thing since like the thirteen hundreds or something. Okay. Well, right. Give me a plowman. You don't want the man. No, you don't want the <laughs> you guy. You, <laughs> the you, want, meal. you want his lunch. I want a plowman meal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you go to no, if, you, if, if the, I go Pierce the Plowman's Creed, circa 1394, mentions wow. a traditional plowman's meal of bread, cheese, and beer. That was just a random year I threw out. You, you, you fucking nailed it. I wow. accidentally nailed it. If I go into somewhere in England and say, "Give me a plowman's meal," Wait, I mean, where, yeah, are we talking a McDonald's? Because you won't no. get anything. <laughs> <laughs> just a pub, like the a, like plow. a, uh, yeah, like a, a, a English pub that has food. Well, as with places here, it does have to be on the menu for you to order it. That's not true. Time. That's not entirely true because I've ordered a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I fucking nailed it. Yeah. Brought it right back. But yeah, there are multiple pubs that would give you a plowman sandwich or a plowman's lunch. All oh, right. Yeah. What would what would the American equivalent to that be? Chips and chips and queso, chips and salsa. I don't think you could generalize to America. And, do you like do, do you think chips and salsa is an American dish? <laughs> <laughs> I just want a clarification I think on an that. American restaurant dish. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, mean, it's like, I just want to know <laughs> what's not, going on here. <laughs> <laughs> something that most Americans would understand. Oh God, damn it! Now I look like a fucking fool. <laughs> I thought maybe I missed her. <laughs> What would be the equivalent in America? I like a chicken pot pie or something, right? Mm. No, that's more English than. Well, I mean, American. what is America anyway? It's just a bunch of Europeans and Mexicans hanging out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, pretty, I mean, um, technically, the Mexicans were Spaniards at one point, so I just said, uh, yeah, it's Europeans and indigenous people who got fucked over. <laughs> Some Asians, dude. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you, I guess none of you guys really live downtown. The. F- Fucking rot rally was back this weekend. That thing is loud. The Republic of Texas rally. It's a bike motorcycle rally. That's yep. There. And you. thank you for the context for those that learn from Austin and don't have to hear the awful noises. It is so fucking annoying, especially living downtown. Like I had to have a white noisemaker on the entire weekend because I just could kept hearing like it sounded like an army of bikers were circling <laughs> my apartment complex. <laughs> it was awful. And uh, something about like the on the way up to like Max Revs. There's a certain frequency where I can just feel my eardrums going, like, and it like lingers sometimes. Like, like God, ow! I can go for <laughs> some of that wax right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm nowhere near this, and it sucks. It's yeah. the goddamn worst. Did you, that happens like once a year, right? Yeah, I think sometimes only well, like goes June. Yeah, and then they'll just like so there'll just be thousands of 
It looks Bikers like a frenzy. All there, around. Awesome. When I was in college, I did a naked bike ride. Uh, did you go full naked? I didn't go full naked because I was. I didn't want to get busted, and I knew that it wasn't legal. So I had like the tiniest of tiny underwear shorts on. Yeah. Um, but this whole group that I was with, we started out. Where Where do they do uh, Eeyore's birthday? Peace Park. Uh, Peace Park. Peace Park yeah. yeah. So we were all meeting at Peace Park. That was like the rally point. And then we like went past the Capitol. Then we went to East Six. Then we went down. We ended up on Sixth Street. And it was during Rot Rally weekend. So it was Austin bikers <laughs> and regular bikers. Yeah. It was the weirdest mix of the two crowds. But he was also pretty groovy. Do you go skinny <clears throat> dipping often? Have you been skinny dipping? Been skinny dipping, yeah. Been skinny, have you all been skinny dipping? No, no, I've never done that. How about you, Chris? No one's I... getting my tackle out in public. I don't, yeah, I'm not. I'm uh, not I, I mean, I will if there's a camera there. But if, I mean, yeah. if it's for fun on my own time, no. What? That's the most backwards thing. I'll, I'll... Hey, can I, can I sell you a calendar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, what I'm saying though is like, no, I feel like you are one of the few people on earth that would have that response. <laughs> I will get naked if there's a camera around, but if it's on my own, no <laughs> Only thanks. if I'm forcing people to, uh, to help me use my nakedness. I'll, I guess I'll do it if it's like, if, if it's like, not on my own. When was the last time you went? Skinny dipping? Uh, like a year or two ago, a couple of year, year or two ago, mm. at, at the pool where I live. Cool. Late at night. There's a, there's, there's a, a tradition at Rice University where once or twice a month there's a group that'll get together and they'll run around campus nude. Uh, it's like a club that meets, uh, at like, and, and at, on the 13th of the month at like around 10 p.m., they'll all meet and then just run around campus naked and that's plaster themselves up against the library window. <laughs> <laughs> Could so. you imagine just going working late at the library not knowing it's coming? Oh, yeah, I have, I've, I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> and then you look up and there's someone rubbing their junk up on the window. You're that's like, pretty, oh, right. It's, that's pretty it's, did it's that the 13th. Twice. They did that for the undie run, so people were still in underwear. But, like, everybody shows up and they donated the clothes they were wearing. And then we all went for a run around campus and we went through the PCL, the, the, our library. And like we were like the quietest mob running through. We're all just in our undies. And it was such a massive group that the cop, campus police couldn't fucking do anything about it. You know, it's a good time. So they joined. <laughs> <laughs> you, you usurped their authority. I had an incident on a train recently when I was in England. Um, just bought a ticket, got on a train to London, flasher. and then what did you say? It was a flasher? No. Wait, it was a flasher. <laughs> just jumping off at the same time. I mean, well, we did talk about that earlier. Yeah. It was a, yeah. But one of the stops, a bunch of kids got on. They're probably like 10, between 9 and 11, maybe. Just like eight kids. Never forget. They come, <laughs> oh, okay. they, come they just come like screaming onto the train. Immediately, like the first one, like grabs two of the holding bars and like does a backflip. And then a bunch of other people just start like messing up everyone's hair who sat on the train. And I was like, what is happening? And there was this like buff, like probably like 25 year old dude. And one of the kids was just doing this to him. And the, and the guy was like, what do I do? He's a what child. And then, I, and then they were coming towards me. I was like, and in, in the very short amount of time that it took him to get to me, I was like, is it okay to punch a 10 year old in the face <laughs> if he's doing that to you? If he's like messing with you? And I was like, I don't think I can punch him. I don't think I can even shove him off me. Do you just have to sit it's, there and get like it was touched your, by children? It was your British and your American sides yeah, fighting I internally. What, I didn't know what I was going to do. You're on camera. What? You're most likely on camera. Yeah, probably. So I was just like, uh, I don't know. And I just couldn't make up my mind on like, would I push him off me? Would I just sit there like that confused guy? Or would I just give him a thump right in his chops? And uh, thankfully, he just never got to me. He just oh. like, they just like That's ran around. That's a weird and then power. They, they got off at the next station and just like hopped the railings around. Of course off. they did. And I was just like, wow, I really didn't know what I was going to do there. I assume, because my British side, you know, takes priority. I would have just sat there and just taken it and <laughs> be like, what? what? Stop touching me. What would you have done? I feel like I would have Spartan kicked him. Like, as soon as he came to me, like, if I was sitting or standing, I would have just gone. But then, then, but then you got to think, like, imagine the headline. Blaine Gibson from Rooster Teeth kicks, kicks a child, child in the face. Ah, it like, would have been what? in the it, chest, and it would have been more of a, not a kick, but more of just like a, like a shove, shove with me. your foot. Yeah, just get off me. Oh, if there was CCTV though, you would you there's no way you could have come off well. The little shits anything. are like are fucking man. <laughs> you kicked it, in the It chest. sounds like it could have been a a, a bit for get fact. <laughs> 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 like children run amok. Yeah. Like, how do you control them? That's like a weird power. Like a child can they do, do any and like and I didn't know, and I'm 20 years too late. 
I yeah. I could have been a little. Jester. I was afraid of everything when so I was, was a child. I was, I was you in line. Yeah. I was very afraid of getting even told off by a teacher or my parents. Yeah. There was a, a mass robbing in it was a train robbing actually in Oakland recently. It was like last year or two years ago, where it was just a mob of people boarded a rail in Oakland and just fucking robbed everybody on the train. But there were so many of them that like no one resisted, mm -hmm. and I don't think there was any arrests. Did Did you ever watch that I Am the Machine video? Oh uh -huh. yeah, yeah. That's I exactly that what video. that makes me think of. What is that? I'll send it to you later. But it's like a what's the guy's name? Bert Kirshner. Yeah, it's on the Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, he or something. tells the story about how it's a really long story. Is that like the, the, the Russian short one? version? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he takes a Russian language <clears throat> class when he's in college. Then they take a trip to Russia. Then when he's there, he befriends Russian mobsters, and they're on a train going from one city to another. And the mobsters get drunk, and they all rob the train. Shit. And he 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 helps them rob. Well, did he have <laughs> a choice? He was like, well, he was like part of the Russian mafia at that point. <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. I guess it's a it's a fucking crazy story. It might be number one crazy story. It's up by there. a civilian. Yeah, right. you should yeah. absolutely listen to it. It's a it's a really wild story. Uh, here, let me read this thing over here. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of the Receive Podcast is also brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Squarep Squarespace is great. Uh, I like it because they got cool templates, nice, clean, intuitive when it comes to customizing them. Uh, best of all, anyone in my family can do it without having to ask me a lot of questions. That's number one. Uh, every Squarespace template designs support all major content types, including pages, galleries, blogs, commerce, calendars, and more. With Squarespace, you can get the right message to the right people. You collect email addresses through your website and send subscribers the information they care about most with unique mailing lists. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth. Save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash roosterteeth for 10% off your first purchase. And you know, we've been asking you to share your Squarespace creator websites. We've gone through and picked some of our favorites. And as a reminder, with Squarespace, you too can make sites like this. So be sure to tweet at us with the hashtag RT Squarespace. Uh, here's a few of our favorites for this week. Uh, first up, we have K Rose Artist. I love how different uh, people can customize these to look. Uh, next up, we have at aw underscore Blake. And finally, we have right. at Nick underscore Pally. Mm. So thanks for showing us your websites, guys. Thanks for uh, <clears throat> using Squarespace, and thanks for supporting the Receive Podcast. Did uh, I, did, has Chris, did I talk about the freshly squeezed juice thing? I don't even know if you'd remember this. What? I'm intrigued. So Chris and I went to get lunch at Kirby Lane this one time, and we're sitting down, and Chris is a very nice person. He's never rude, but this one time I was with Chris and I just wanted to fucking eject her seat out of the booth that we were sitting in because the waiter comes up and they're like, hey, can I take you guys' orders? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll take a coffee. And he was like, with your freshly squeezed juice, is it, like, how fresh is it? <laughs> and the waiter was like, I'm sorry, like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, is it like, was it squeezed today? Like, do you guys what? squeeze it? And he was like, well, I don't, I think we get it from somewhere else. He's like, so you get your freshly squeezed juice from another place? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, mm, that's, not, that's, that, that's not freshly squeezed juice. I didn't say it like that. You fucking did it because I was. I, I was there. like, did you do you is, is it squeezed at the restaurant <laughs> or is it like freshly squeezed that we've shipped from who knows where? That's not fresh. What, but, uh, what, you, what you're trying to ask if it's from concentrate or, or is, you knew it was freshly squeezed. Yeah. You like, just wanted it to be like, like it was an orange was it, earlier. Like, you was it squeezed to order. Yes. Or was it, yeah. Or is it at least squeezed in that restaurant? Right. And what the guy was like, no, we, we get it from a carton. And he's like, no, that's not fresh. <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? How is it? Freshly Jeez, squeezed I, from I, a carton. I'm kind of on Chris's side here. It was just a very awful conversation to be in the middle of because I was just sitting there like, I just want to fucking die right now. Because the guy was like, what, what fucking drink do you want, dude? And then Chris is just like, me and Dan should order it. It's squeezed juice now, is it? You want the OJ latte cappuccino? <laughs> oh, speaking of OJ. Simpson? Oh, yeah, he's he on got Twitter, Twitter now, baby. He got, he got Twitter. He's on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Perfect segue. And... Uh, Oh, well, like it's, it's just so fucking weird to me. He had that video the other day, and then right before the podcast, Eric was showing me that... Oh, no, I think I just saw it. Eric was sitting here. That Bill Cosby had a Father's Day tweet. Oh, yeah, dude. They're coming out of the woodwork to say horrible <laughs> things then, about so their past crimes. So I looked, right? So I'm like, Bill Cosby had a Father's Day tweet? So I looked at it, and I thought, 
Bill Cosby has 3.5 million Twitter followers? Whoa. How does Bill Cosby have more followers than me? Well, he's Bill Cosby. No, I mean, he, as, as, he's, Cosby, as he claims, he's America's dad. <laughs> yeah, he did say that in his Father's Day he tweet. Did. Bill Cosby, sex offender, yeah. has more tweets than Gus Sirola. Wait, wait, allegedly? Non sex offender. Allegedly, or did he's they in jail. confirm it? Well, like, how many? He's, okay, then, yeah. How yeah. many? It, okay. Like, Charles Manson. He didn't have Twitter, dude. I know. I know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> if he did, if he. Chris, oh, he, would dead. Have, he would have like 7 million followers. Yeah. If he had Twitter, he would. Everyone would follow Charles, especially if he just... I mean, he had a lot of followers in real life. Exactly. Like, 12. <laughs> well, I mean... That was, was impressive like, before social media. Yeah, yeah, before social media. That was a lot. Like, no one follows... Yeah, like, do you like, have any followers? No. What do you mean? I've got 12. Yeah, he's got a... He's got a... He had a cult. Yeah. He would definitely have a lot of Twitter followers. Yeah, I mean... I think, what, Jesus had 12 as well? What was right. It, it was 13, wasn't it? Was it? <laughs> then one ended up being not so great. Yeah, yeah. I this is a recap of an old podcast story, but Chris was telling me on the tr on the stream today we're streaming uh, Doom, and he was telling me how he confronted his mom on the Easter Bunny, and he was like a sitter down like, so the Easter Bunny's fake? Yes, Chris. What about Santa? Is he fake? <sighs> yes, Chris. What about Jesus, mom? <laughs> <laughs> That's just like fucking died. No, no, no. He's real. What was the last? Is that one? He's real. I don't. Oh yeah, she said that. Yeah, yeah. He's real. <laughs> So, Chris, oh, fresh squeeze juice. So, um, we were talking briefly about this before the podcast started. Uh, you haven't watched Chernobyl yet, right? I want to watch it tonight. Have Blaine and Chris? I watched, watched it. Chernobyl? Yeah, I watched it. So I, um, I, I, I watched it. I loved it. Mm -hmm. That was a great show. And uh, the other day, I was thinking, I was like, I wonder if there's anything in our day to day life that has radiation, like you just don't think about, right? Like I think about all those people who evacuated Pripyat. Like, did yeah. anybody go in afterwards and like loot their houses and then like resell some of the stuff they left behind? Like, oh, what yeah. if, what if you had bought something like off of eBay and it like oh, turned that out was radiation? Right, like it was there and then you got it. So, did you buy? I bought a Geiger counter. Ooh. Oh my god, you did! <laughs> does it that's make like the noise? New, that's it like does. The, to make the fallout noise. Uh, I'll, I'll, well, let's see. We'll do the. No, it's a little. It beeps. Ah, that's not as cool. It's like uh. clickety click. So, uh, we, so then the, the, the thing was, I was really, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but I was disappointed. I couldn't, I was disappointed. <laughs> I, I couldn't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> what is it pointing at? The thing's comedic is it your timing. Wi -Fi? <laughs> I was disappointed. I couldn't find anything radioactive, but I guess I thought that was a good thing. We have some things here that we, I wanted to test is it to see if they were radioactive. <laughs> we, 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 we were messing with this thing earlier and it was it wasn't going off at all. No, was not going at off all. Like, is it a set interval? No. Anytime it Alright, time it. It's detecting stuff. Because you, you set it to point one, right? Yeah, I set it to point one. And, Rodkins? <laughs> uh, uh micro micro sieverts an hour. Something Guess? you're getting closer to something that's so uh, that? are you trying to find like radon or something? What right. is it? Nice? So there's a maricium. Americium? That's a lot. It's in, in smoke detectors. That's how the the radioactive Boy Scout got it. Right. That's that's what made me think. What? To what? Look at there's a there's a guy who oh, he, he was harvesting, wasn't he? Yeah, he considered himself like a pro, child prodigy and stuff, and he was trying to like do like nuclear physics in his parents' basement. His parents didn't fucking know about it. He was in the Boy Scouts, and he started just uh, buying smoke detectors and going to junkyards and collecting smoke detectors and collecting all the radioactive material in them and just started doing experiments with radioactive material and then he fucking died because he I, well I guess he didn't die like he as a child from, uh, later on yeah substance abuse so kitty litter also apparently can be radioactive if you have enough of it it's less radioactive than just the stuff around me earlier was was it my laptop guess you're making me laptop? nervous so this you, is a really small dose, by the way. Like this, this is what you would get in a day. It's, it's only a, chest a day from what? Just the just being alive. The sun. Yeah. So uh, I also mm, had a, a banana. I've been letting rot. <laughs> just bananas. Yeah, the, the potassium in them decays. Wow. What's the half life on a banana? Uh, I think you. Yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting question. But I think you get like 0. 0.05 micro servets. Servets. I don't remember how to say it from eating a banana. My parents one time were updating the granite countertops in their bathroom, or they're installing granite countertops rather. And granite, because it's so like low to the ground and they harvest it, you know, from the earth 
uh, will catch radiation from the Earth's core that'll be like coming through and, you know, I guess release in the atmosphere. I'm not sure the science, and I know this is speaking like in very general terms, but I was learning about it at the time while we were installing these countertops in science class. And uh, my teacher was like, yeah, so like there's people out there that are selling radioactive granite to consumers and then they have just like this giant thing that's radioactive in their oh. in their house. So then uh, I was like, well, that's interesting. I just installed radioactive countertops with my dad in our bathroom. Can I bring you a piece and can you test it? And I said, yeah, sure. So I brought, you know, a chunk of radioactive or the, the uh, countertop uh, and he's like, okay, I'll take this home. And then the next time I saw him in class, he was like, hey, I got some bad news. Like that piece of countertop you got was like super radioactive. And I was like, what do you mean? This was in front of the whole class. And he's like, I put the Geiger counter up to it and it like spiked. It was like, and he's like, and I was like, so should I like, what do I do? And he's like, I don't know, but I took it off of my leg as soon as I tested it out. Oh my. <laughs> and I was like. Uh, oh, and you okay. eat off of it. Okay. Well, no, it was in, in the bathroom. So, yeah, you eat off of it. And they're, <laughs> oh. they're still installed. I might be you, going you, you, home you take soon. Take this, yeah. Could I take that yeah. when I go home? I'll, I'll give you the manual. So Isn't in it chat, a bit late now? <laughs> in chat, Dreams and Weirdness says that I should test Chris. Oh, I'm nervous now. It's, it's low. It's much lower over here. Hmm. Oh, no, wait. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I borrow? Whoever did that sound effect? Test other things. It takes a little while for it to read. It, it, it can take up to like 10 seconds for it to sample. Seconds, okay. I want to test like things like gifts. I stuff. tested all of that stuff. Oh, you have? Yeah. Nothing? Okay. Trust me, I walked around, I walked around today testing My as much stuff as I could. Like, started beating like crazy, <laughs> and then a, a small nuclear bomb went off. Where do you get a Geiger counter? Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> How much was it? Oh, uh, that was like a hundred bucks. That Whoa! Could, that could be that's... super important though if something if went you need bad. It? Yeah, like you don't need it till you need it, but then when you need it, you need it. Oh, then someone, uh, Eric, didn't you say beer is radioactive? It could be, yeah. Nothing. Oh, uh, I I don't invite very hundred. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> I don't invite very many people to my apartment, but Eric is one of the few people that I let come over all the time. So we ca he came over because we were gonna get intoxicated and watch Doom together because Doom is fucking awful. Uh, and he, I met him on the roof of my parking garage because that's where the visitor parking is, and he's like walking up to me, and we're like, you know, super far away, but like waving at each other, and he sees this beer can on the ground. And with all of his fucking might, he kicks the shit out of this empty beer can, and it wasn't fucking empty. Oh, God. So he was like, hi, <laughs> you know? And then the beer can, like, flew right at me, and then I heard it, like, hit the ground, and I knew that it was full and was about to explode, and it was, like, slow motion, and I was like, ah! And it exploded and sprayed a little bit on my leg. It was the weirdest moment, and we were just crying laughing on the roof of my garage. <laughs> What, what made you think it was empty? I guess you wouldn't think there'd be a full beer on the ground. Yeah, it was like it was just a beer can. Who leaves a full <laughs> can of Lone Star on a roof, dude? dude I found well, that's, some, that's better to do that than to drink a full can. Nah, of Lone I Star. If I knew it was full, I would have had it. I might have told the story. Before. In college, there was a twelve pack, like a, a box, the twelve pack of Keystone or something like that, and it was uh, outside in the middle of the summer, and it was sitting on our patio. We shared a patio with a couple other uh, apartments for like a month. And I just assumed it was trash. And then I went over to it at one point to pick it up to throw it out. It was full of beer. Aiden, you threw it away, right? No, I drank it. Oh my God. It had been out I for a month, it. dude. It had been out and it had been, and, but like I took it in and then I, and we, me and my roommates, we put it in the fridge and then we inspected it and we tasted the sample and it tasted like Keystone. Well, which... What did the Geiger counter say about it? <laughs> How hard up were you for money and I alcohol? I was in college. I guess that I explains see a that. lot. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, beer on the, at my front door, I'm gonna drink it. I don't care how old it's been. Was it good? It's Keystone. I've never had that. It's not it's not good. Not great. But it it was as all it was like all Keystone. This episode of the Bruce Pocket Frosty of Keystone. I, I want to <laughs> run through a hypothetical scenario with you, Chris. Mm -hmm. Gus hates hypotheticals, but go on. All right, you're in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You're just having a nice time. You're having a nice dinner. A woman behind you starts choking. What do you do? I would. Can I hit her on the chest? I mean, not. Hit <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> go on. I don't. Or back. 
the back. I hit her in the back. Why are you masturbating? What, what, what are you doing with that hand, Chris? <laughs> I don't know the Heimlich. And if you yeah, don't, but apparently it's this on the woman's back. I, I don't know the Heimlich. <laughs> I would not try and squeeze her because you can break ribs and hurt someone really bad. And yeah, that, that is worse than choking. That's true. Well, I well someone might. In I his defense, there's been lawsuits. Like, uh, yeah, I might like pat her really hard on the back or get her some water. Mm. I don't know. I wouldn't try to do the Heimlich because I don't know what I would do. I might like end up. Should I try? Is that? I don't know. If you don't try and. I, I assume you would want to try and save him, right? Yeah, I would. I would, but I don't know if I'd be qualified to. I was gonna- f I, I assume you would say I would do the Heimlich, but then I was gonna throw in, like, she's eight months pregnant. Oh, oh shit. What do you do then? Oh. Well then- Because I couldn't figure it out. I was running through the- I think you- I was just you, being you, a you, The place is supposed to do the Heimlich would be above where the baby rests. Like, there's still space there. For like you to do the, the bottom yeah, rib, it's like right it? here. So, you, so, so it you might be actually that's easier, that's like in the boobs. In a weird way, it might be easier because you have a thing to avoid. You have like it's like well, don't you know? <laughs> go right above the bump, but yeah. it, but but below the two bumps, and you can like, still punch her in like, the chest because <laughs> she's not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I saw there was a. Yeah, I don't know what the procedure is. I, for I, doing I'm going to look it up to see if I can find it. But I saw there was a. Um, there, I read an article the other day about how they're starting to make CPR dummies. Th with breasts on them, like to simulate giving CPR to a woman, because if a woman has a cardiac arrest, they're something like forty percent less likely to receive CPR because people might be nervous giving them chest compressions. Oh, oh like you don't want to like right. touch him there, right? Well, you don't want to be yeah, yeah. You don't want to be a perv. So now I think they're they're making the dummies so that people, people get comfortable with comfortable. the concept mm. or know I, how to do it. I learned it. I took a business. Look, dude, I was right. Fucking nailed it. Above the bump, right there. Do you think Elise wow. actually pregnant? Or do you think that that's a that's good to know? Because I I would have just been hands off, like, like you would have squeezed the baby out. <laughs> I would just be like I don't know what to do. <laughs> I I took a business class and in it we learned that you don't have to help someone if they're dying. Like if you see someone drowning right in front of them, theoretically, legally, you could just watch them. Nah, I don't know about that. I think that's I changing. Think, a I, that can't be right. And B. You would just help him, right? Yeah, why would you? There was, there was something I, if about- If I could save someone's life and get sued, I would still do it. Well, because there was something about if you don't get involved and in, in you aren't involved with it to begin with, like if you weren't responsible for how they started to get drown, like drowning or whatever, I don't think that you would Look, have okay, any okay, legal okay, action. According to the Texas Good Samaritan Act, a person who in good faith administers emergency care at the scene of an emergency or in a hospital is not liable in civil damages for an act performed during the emergency unless the act is willfully or wantonly negligent. Right, so willfully and wantonly negligent, they mentioned, my teacher would say, like, that's like if you, like, just kind of, like, a kid's drowning and you just kind of, like, flip them around and you're kind of just doing half-assed, like, if you yeah. don't give it your best, yeah. then, yeah, then... In that instance, yeah, you could face legal action, but I don't think you have to. I remember seeing a clip. By the way, I would help. I would help the if person. Seinfeld taught me anything. <laughs> That's funny. You say that Phantom SCV in chat said it's the Seinfeld law. Uh, what is it? What happens in Seinfeld? It's like the last episode. They get in trouble for not oh. helping someone who's getting mugged. But I think I remember that there was a video of a guy. There's just two kids on the side of a river, and they just saw a guy like floating down, just drowning, like trying to for help, and they were just laughing at him. Ooh. And then they got arrested. Because he died. Is that in England? And they didn't help him. I don't know where. Oh man, I'd feel so shitty. Though. Oh, I remember hearing about that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was in the U.S. somewhere. Now, now to be fair, that was probably was dangerous to go in and get him. Like maybe they just didn't want to risk their own lives. But but it also seems they, like they, they were made like... no effort to throw him anything or do anything yeah. at all. Damn. Keep in mind, this is like what seven years ago that I learned this, so it might have changed since then. And I think he might have also been speaking specifically about, like, state of Texas law or something. I don't know. But it was one of those things where I remember hearing about it, and I was like, oh, that's fucked up. Like, you don't have to help people. But yeah. yeah. It's messed up. It's messed up. It's a messed up thing to teach people. <laughs> yeah. I, w I was watching... Here I, I am. I think it was... Uh, <laughs> I think it was Adam Ruins Everything mm. who was talking about, like, cars and roadways. And I guess that the concept of jaywalking didn't used to exist. Like when cars first started and when, you know, there were roads were being built or streets were being built in cities that people could just walk in the street alongside cars. But, you know, people invariably started getting hit and hurt by cars. So, like, auto manufacturers came up with this concept of jaywalking to say that people couldn't walk in the street, that they were only for cars. And, in fact, the term, I didn't know this, the term jaywalking 
is supposed to be like it comes like back then jay was like slang for a hillbilly or like a dumb country person who didn't know anything about the city so it's like so we still use the term jaywalking because they meant it to be like oh that idiot doesn't know how to walk in the city oh that's interesting yeah but it's like we still use that term i don't think uh, england has day. that i think you can just walk in the street whenever you want wait really i mean i've never got in trouble i just crossed wherever i wanted as a kid <laughs> maybe i was breaking the law each time I feel like they're very strict about that, though, in the UK. They have, like, very specific crosswalks. It says, look right. Yeah. You got to I in mean, London. Where, wait, where did you grow up again? It wasn't... It's in the country. Yeah, in the country, I don't think it matters. There was a video of a guy dressed as Scorpion from Mortal Kombat who was crossing the street in front of a convention center, and then a cop played his, like, sirens and said, get over here. <laughs> <laughs> it was obviously staged. What did he arrest him for? Really funny. I, I think it was staged. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I guess he was jaywalking. I don't know. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I, uh, did, you hear, did you hear about that guy, that um, Instagram influencer from Austin, the construction Instagram influencer? It's all ruse, wasn't it? What? It's all fake. Wait, all oh, fake. I saw, what, what is it? I never heard of it. I, I saw your tweet, but I was like, I don't know anything Something about, about like, someone claimed that their dad had uh, seen influencers and thought the idea of them was, like, ridiculous, so he decided to make his own Instagram account where he was going to do influencer <clears> things, <throat> and then he gained this huge audience or something right yeah when i last looked the other day when i think when i tweeted about it he was like at four hundred seven thousand instagram followers i'm trying to pull it up now to see uh what he's at at this time but yeah then it turns out that it was all like he's at five hundred twenty two thousand followers that's less than a sex offender <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was marketing for uh, a coffee company here in austin it's good marketing people we were talking about it we're talking about it now yeah. but it, like at the time you would have thought like this seems too slick like too well done do you think they bought followers or something I don't know. That seems like a lot of followers just gain. People were talking about it everywhere. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of reporting oh. on it. I felt mm. like I saw like every news outlet covering it or talking about it. Yeah. Well, now it's got more story because it came out as a pre. It's like a stunt. So now people are yeah. Mm-hmm. It's got it's got legs. It was like that reaction against like people want to react against influencers <laughs> by subscribing to this guy's trying to subvert it. But really, it's, it's all part it. of the it's all part of the plan. It's all it was all manufactured. Which is weird to me. How is in, how are current influences on social media different than just celebrities doing shampoo commercials? I think the stuff? difference is like normally when you think of a celebrity, they have another career that they do, like they're <clears throat> an actor or a musician or something. But there's people who are just influencers on social media, like that's their job is just the social media part. Without yeah, I guess that's true. The you other never have like the other side. Someone in an ad who's just like. They just influence ads and that's all they do. Right. Like, I, I think there's been a few crossovers. Like, I think about, who was it? There was um that uh, early YouTube makeup person who she's now, she's got, like, a line of makeup with, like, Maybelline or someone. I want to say Community Channel, but I don't think it was. Hmm. No, no, no. no it community was, Channel it was, the Australian? No, no. Michelle. Michelle Fan? Fan. Yeah, her. That's different to Community Channel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, always, I, I don't know why I said that. Michelle Fan. So that's like the one time I can think where like an influencer then became a spokesperson. I think Community Channel is Natalie Tran. Yes. And you're confusing it with Michelle Fan. Fan. The names rhyme. The names rhyme. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's like there's like there's some of the early YouTube people. Yeah. I think I saw both of them once. I went to God. What year was it? It might have been like oh five maybe. Uh, Jeff and I were in San Diego for San Diego Comic Con. And there was going to be a, a YouTube meetup at one of the hotels, like right next to the convention center. And we were like, oh, that'll be interesting. Let's go, let's go see what that is. So we went over there and it's like YouTube was a year or two old maybe. And so we, we walked up and we, we didn't, we could see where the, the gathering was. It was like, it was literally just people sitting at the bar. And then we sat like off to the side, like looking. It was like every popular YouTuber at the time. And then there weren't many, but I remember like, I, I want to say Community Channel was there. It was like, oh, they're all just like sitting at the bar and nobody's talking to them. Like it's, it was really weird. And now to think all these years later, like if, if you went to a bar and like the top five YouTube channel creators were there and who, I mean, who is it like, um, T-series, T-series <laughs> and uh, PewDiePie were sitting there. It'd be like madness. There'd be yeah. people everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny to think like how quickly all of that changed. Mm. I think we just, we each had a beer. Jeff and I just had a beer and we're like, all right, this is, this is lame. <laughs> lame. And we left. Some of them are nice. Some of them are just complete nightmares. I, I go to the Creator Summit every year where it's, where it's like the top 200, whatever. And it's, it's really interesting how 
because usually you go out and it's like, oh, yeah, everyone's all right. You know, that you might not, not get on with someone. It's weird to be in a group of people who some people you really, really like and some people you just want to walk away from because they're so obnoxious. It's weird. It's like it's... everyone is heightened on the scale mm -hmm. of like their more extreme ends of the scale. It's like I hate this and I like it at the same time. It's weird. Is, is, is it... Is it that they're performing at all times, or is it the fact that... Yeah, some people are just always on. Always on, or is it the fact that they've had achieved some, like, fame or something, so that they're caught up in their in themselves? You yeah, it's weird, because some because people have become successful since they started doing it. I, I've been to all of them, and then you'll see someone who's, like, wasn't here last year, mm -hmm. and they typically bloody love themselves, because they're like, oh, yeah, I'm just smashing it right now. It's like... All right, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just have a chat. Everyone has done stuff. But yeah, some people are just way too much. Yeah. I think on that spectrum, like, you're definitely one of the more down-to-earth people. Like, you know, sniff your own shit. But I can imagine Thanks, what, those meetings would be kind of unbearable. I, I'm only imagining, but is it just a bunch of selfie sticks and people vlogging the whole time? Um, I feel like it used to be like that more. But the if you go a few times, then you're not doing that. Yeah. And at this point... Nobody Most people have been a couple of times. So be like it's uncool. Like, and everyone, I don't know. I feel like people just appreciate like real conversations. I'm certainly not performing in any way when I'm at that. I'm yeah. just like having a beer with people and just having a chat. You're there in real time. I'm there, I'm there in real time, not in slow mo. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually already done a collab because of it. I went to Vancouver to do a, a collab with Linus Tech Tips. I'm a little, I'm a little jealous. I like the guy. No, no. It is very hard to go anywhere. At the moment. Did you talk about this on the podcast already? Uh, I don't think we did. How I so? don't even want to talk about it. You don't? You're the one who brought it up. I know. I hate it. I can't fly anywhere. Why? Flight's just... Okay. You can buy a flight, right? And then you expect that to be a real flight and you go on the flight. <laughs> Some of them aren't. Some of them, I believe... I'm talking about American Airlines, but I haven't flown on any of the other ones. <laughs> they just have flights that they know aren't real. But instead of not selling them... They'll sell them and just cancel them. They'll be like, oh, this flight's canceled. And then you'll be like, why? What? what? And they're like, yeah, it's canceled. Do you get your or, money back? Yeah, they're always like, it's not about money. Or you'll get a delay and it'll be like, oh, your flight's it's delayed. It's uh, two hours, two hour delay. And then eventually it's like, okay, it's been two hours. Let's get on the plane. And it's like, oh, this plane, this plane isn't going anywhere. Get off the plane. And then like, other people will get on that plane and fly away on it. <laughs> they go somewhere else. Yeah, <laughs> they'll be like, we'll do a gate change. It's like, but why was I on that plane? And it's like, oh, you'll be on a plane on the runway. I'll be like, uh, you know what? The crew just timed out. We can't go anywhere without with these pilots. We'll get you some new pilots. And then you'll go outside, and then the gate will change to a different flight. And you're like, and then you go to the customer service desk. It's like, your, your flight's been canceled. They'll just lie to your face, and you don't go anywhere. And this is how you go to the airport. You go to the airport. It hap it's happened to me three times in the last month. I've had a canceled flight. Yeah, you weren't on last Monday's podcast because you were supposed to fly somewhere. I was meant to go to Vancouver. Uh, but then you, yeah, it's fine. Sorry. you got to the airport and your plane wasn't there. I didn't even. Okay, so I woke up at 3 a.m. It was a 6 a.m. flight. Woke up at 3.30, did some little bit of work, packed. Uh, and then I was like, oh, the flight's canceled. And then on the app, it's like, all right, this flight is canceled. Uh, pick any other flight to Vancouver uh, free of charge. And on the list, it says there are no other flights. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I called them and they're like, yeah, every... Uh, Every other flight is due to take off after you're already coming back from this trip. And I was like, so... And they're just like... And I'm like, okay, so I'm not going. I had to go on United in the end. Oh. Mm -hmm. But on the way back, I still had my leg that was on American Airlines. And just to make sure, I, I sent a little DM to American Airlines. I said, flying tomorrow on a record locator, blah, blah, blah. Do you know if this is a real flight that will actually board and take <laughs> off? Or is it one of the ones that gets delayed until the next day or cancelled without any explanation? Trying to figure out whether or not to go to the airport. What did they say? They were like, we do our best to make sure. Our <laughs> uh, but what, I, I just think like half of the planes are missing. It might be the, the Max we, 8 we, thing. We talked to we, you. Is there a conspiracy? Me, What's going Bernie on? Bernie and Jeff talked about this. Like, I speculated initially Bernie's that. Bernie's been delayed. Jeff's been delayed. Barbara got delayed. That maybe. Well, that was Bar weather. Well, Barbara's her flight was cancelled first, wasn't it? Uh, I think before the weather even was here. Oh, was it? I, I didn't know so. that part. Uh, at first, we speculated that maybe like taking the Max out of the fleet reduced their capacity, but apparently there's a labor dispute between American Airlines and uh, like their deliberate, mechanics. Deliberate oh, and the mechanics so are slowing that's down. That's why all the flights are getting cancelled. Yeah. But they don't just not sell the flight. Or They're make still less selling flights. it. 
they sell every flight as though nothing's happening, and then like 20% of them don't go. Mm. And they don't have any intention of making the flight. Well, they know there's I, not enough. I think they don't, I think they're playing a shell game, right? Like they're going to see they're which flights are the most profitable and continue to run those and then cancel the ones that aren't as profitable. It's just very hard to get anywhere right now. Well, I mean, you just have to fly another airline, dude. I'd, well, I've not flown them. I mean, my United one was delayed as well. <laughs> but it wasn't canceled. <laughs> it wasn't canceled. Is it happening we, on any of the we, airlines? We you, also, you don't fly American? No, I have, I have not had that experience. Okay. But we've also had some really bad weather in Austin quite frequently lately, which I think has also been contributing to problems. Yesterday, uh, was it? I think it was a Lufthansa A380 landed in Austin because they had to get diverted from Houston. Oh, shit. Yeah, I think it's like a Frankfurt to Houston flight. Had to land in Austin because of bad weather. Jeez. It's been really bad weather <coughs> consistently lately. Dang. Austin aside, wild. I'd be interested to know in the comments if you've tried to fly on American Airlines recently. Dennis was saying he had, go. what'd you say, Dennis? Seven flights canceled in the last two days? Uh, Dennis isn't here, but yeah, oh. that, that's what happened. Oh, okay. Wait, he, 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 he had that many? Dennis isn't here. I guess he got canceled. <laughs> 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 He's in chat. What? Eric's. Dennis is in chat? Yeah, that's. I just read him say it. I'm going to beat him up. <laughs> Did you not know that? Dennis, you're in trouble. Yeah. Uh, Dennis said he got home 37 hours after he was supposed to. Last week, I had about seven cancel flights with American in less than two days. That's pretty wild. The thing is, though, is that... Sorry, Dennis. You, you got to think... <laughs> got you in trouble. <laughs> Frowny face. You got to think that, like, 95% of the people on a plane don't fly much. They might fly, like, yeah. twice a year. So when their flight gets canceled, they're like... Oh, what are the chances? But when you fly all the damn time, you're you know like, the chances why, are pretty. Why are the bloody why are they all getting <laughs> cancelled? It's like no one's talking about it. What's happening? I'm so confused. Barb and I had to do a thing recently where we were required to go out to uh, Connecticut in order to film it, and we had like a connection that was only like thirty minutes. A in some North Station. Yeah. Uh -huh. What? We had a connection. A connection was, in Connecticut. I was trying to make some sort of. I, I'm not Barbara. I don't have to do it right. Oh, yeah. pun, you mean. You Dennis says he's in the other room, Eric. We had a connection like New North Carolina or something like that, and we had like 30 minutes to get off of our plane and get over and board the other one. So we were like sprinting through this thing, and we, I think Gus has talked about this before, but those walkways, you know, the motorized oh, walkways yeah, yeah. Yeah. that people just stand on? <laughs> you like, you have to like bob and, and leave, like, and you feel I, like an asshole, but it's just like, like... I'm moving... Yeah, yeah, but that's kind of you gotta you gotta walk. But it is one of those things where like ninety five percent of the people in the airport don't fly that often, so they don't know plane etiquette and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I like when they clap whenever we land. That's always I, fun. I I I did, had a flight where I I landed and my my flight was delayed, and so I landed when my other flight was boarding and I had to run to the other airport. I sprinted. I was like 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 to the point where I'm like How? it was the most the most I've worked out. In a year, trying to get to this flight. Were you all buff after? <laughs> I was super buff. You know, shit's going down when you like tighten the straps on your. Oh <laughs> yeah, I, I was like tightened like up jetpack, and I got to my flight, and they were like, "Oh, sorry, we 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 stopped boarding." Uh, it was like 15 minutes before the flight takes off. It was 15 minutes before the flight. I was one minute away from getting on that plane. I've you made flights by seconds. Before. You should have Naruto run. I did! I was running every way possible! <laughs> His arms were tucked Every up. way possible! And I was like, it was all for nothing. And I was there for like eight hours. You ever, you ever missed a flight or had a flight? Yeah, you, you miss a flight, and you're connecting, and you're at the airport, and then you actually see the plane you're supposed to be on leave. <laughs> it's, it's the worst. It's the saddest thing ever. But it's also very funny. That sucks. Uh, here, I'm gonna read this thing. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of the Received Podcast is also brought to you by Stamps.com. Back in the day, sending red versus blue DVDs through the mail was a big job. And one of the toughest parts of making and selling products online is the shipping. No one really has time to go to the post office. You're busy. Who's got time for all that traffic, parking, lugging your mail and packages? It's a real hassle. That's why you need Stamps.com. Stamps.com brings all of the amazing services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Stamps.com is the faster, more convenient way to get postage. You can use your computer to print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send. And the mail carrier picks it up. No more lugging to the post office. It's the best. There's no equipment to lease, no long-term commitments. It is a must-have for any small business. Uh, I use Stamps.com because I love how easy it is. Don't have to take time out of my day to plan a trip for the post office. I need to get my official postage right from my own computer and printer. Uh, with Stamps.com, you get $0.05 cents off every first-class stamp and up to 40% off of priority mail. 
Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. You can see for yourself why over 700,000 small businesses use Stamps.com. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in Rooster. That's Stamps.com, enter code Rooster. Thank you, Stamps.com, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast and for saving us all lots of time. What are you doing Big over there, help. Chris? What's going on, Chris? Sorry. I, 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 my phone was making noises. It wasn't me. You're f- it was okay. It was me. I was, to blame, I was trying to blame Blaine. I was thinking, maybe Gus will think it's Blaine. I can see it's you. You're over there sitting on your phone like it's an egg. I was like, maybe I can blame it on Blaine. No, it's again. What is wrong with you? Turn your fucking phone off. What's are you, are you watching this podcast? I just watched him screenshot on his phone from twitching. To close what are you doing? What's going I, on? Right before the podcast, I I, I did a, 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 a <laughs> I did a story. As it was like playing the theme music. Oh, right, right. And then I think I posted it twice on accident. I don't know how. <laughs> and then so I was like trying to delete one of them, but it was playing the music. <laughs> but I guess it played it like twice. You can. And then again and again. Put it on silent. I know. I didn't. Yeah. I, I tried to. Do, does anyone else scream? Okay. Whenever I turn off my alarm, because I set my phone on my alarm all the time, I always, when I'm trying to turn it off, I always end up taking a screenshot. So if you look through the photos of my phone, every morning there's like four <laughs> screenshots of my alarm. So you turn off your alarm by hitting the side button. Yeah. I'm just like New this. I'm just doing it. But I'm always just like, I just push buttons until it goes away. So I always have like, every morning, I swear to God, every morning, five screenshots because I hit snooze that many times. I bet that I bet that will save someone's life one day. How's I that? bet someone's going to get kidnapped. And then the the kidnapper's gonna like take the person's phone, accidentally take a screenshot, which will geotag them, and then someone will and sign they, into iCloud and be like, they have a screenshot from this desert, and then they'll find them. They, yeah, they, they could also find my iPhone. Ah oh, shit. <laughs> well, but some, what if they have find my iPhone off, but they have geotagging yeah, screenshots guys. on? Uh, I they're changing the way that that app works. Did y'all see that co- part of the conference? Now it's find my find my. I didn't watch it, but I only know of the blowback from the one thousand dollar stand or whatever. Hmm. I think they changed it now so that even if a laptop, like let's say someone, how does that happen? I, <sighs> is that my vom bin? Yeah. Sorry, he needed it. Oh, to be fair, yeah, he, <laughs> he did go in it earlier. I, so you. You took your beer really aggressively, <laughs> and I was like, "Just wanted to match it." And I was like, "Gavin looked cool when he's grabbing his beer." <laughs> it was like, man, he grabbed it with such enthusiasm. <laughs> I was, I was like, trying to be quick. I know, and I was like, "I'm gonna do the same," because <laughs> before I like just pointed at Blaine, I was like, "Give me a beer." I just pointed. No, you didn't whisper. You you went. Like and a so, child. You didn't and then, give him one? I no, did, because I was like, what do you want? What do you want? And then I saw Gavin grab his beer with such enthusiasm. I'm like, I'm going to do the same. <laughs> and I and gr- didn't work out. And you did it. Yeah, I did. See, the difference is Gavin's, he let his sit there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I didn't open my And now way. he's opening it. <laughs> it needs a bit longer. Yeah. A little bit of spillage. <sighs> it didn't explode like mine. You, yeah, you got, that, well, that explains maybe why Gavin, yours does foam up all the time. Bottles or it's cans. Mainly with bottles, but. Yeah, yeah, you got a problem with that. Um, oh, did you? There, there was a, a really. There were a couple of fucked up stories I read over the last week. I want to kind of touch on. Um, I don't know how, how much y'all care about this, but there was a. There's an app for um, for soccer leagues. For, it was a, it was an app for La Liga, which would let you uh, keep up uh, with you know that league and watch games and whatnot. Apparently. It came out that that app was spying on users who had installed it. It was turning their microphones on oh. to try to find illegal broadcasts of their games. <gasps> like an anti-piracy thing? Right. Damn. And uh, they said that, you know, they were very clear that it was in their terms and conditions that they could do that. That's How is that allowed in the app store? I think it was uh, the Android version. I mean, when you allow you when you check the terms and conditions of the, some of those iPhones, like there was that one where it made you like look like an anime character and it, like made your eyes and uh, did all this stuff, and it's like has access to contacts, photos, cameras, microphones. Like you're like allowing all of these it's things. Like Bitmoji, to you do that. 
You accepted all those terms. Oh, God. <laughs> you just dabbed. I I've emojied super... you the other day, and you said when I, you asked if you wanted to do the podcast, and you said, no, you didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, you should, screen, you should get the screenshot. <laughs> and then I replied with another bitmoji. I just, like, double down. <laughs> didn't even reply to that one. Uh, I used a lot of bitmoji. I haven't done, I haven't done, should I make a bitmoji? Man. Well, now, now is the time. It's hotter than ever. <laughs> it's died, hasn't it? It's so dead. Okay. I uh, still use it. Yeah, I do too. And then there was another story I read. I'm looking for the thing here with Gavin. There was another story I read where I guess this was in the UK. This is your, this is your, uh, your country. Been there? Yep. Yeah. Uh, where was this? This was in Nottingham? Uh, That's a real place. Yeah. Very yeah, good Nottingham. Place. All right. In the Midlands. The, uh, the police there had an idea to fight uh, domestic violence. If... Uh, Anybody was a victim of domestic violence, they would give them no point knives. That way they couldn't be stabbed by their partners. No point knives. Like knives with dulled tips. Wait, 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 wait. So if they recognized that a couple was had a history of domestic violence, they would just give them these give knives? Give them knives without points. Mm. So they still cut stuff. Is right. the idea that then the person who stabs you doesn't realize it's no point knife? Or right. it's just like... He it's like now they can't try and stab you. Now they have to slash you. Right. It's like it seems like the weirdest attempt to fix a problem that doesn't fix the also, problem if you go at hard all. Hard enough, that's going to still go in, and it's going to hurt. Probably right. Worse. It's going to give a nasty bruise. Nasty bruise. A bruise. Bruise. If you stab, if you, if you, if you stab someone with a knife without a point, if you stab someone with a blunt knife, it's no, still there. Like, that could still go it's still right a fucking in. Knife. I would it's it, metal. It's, yeah, it's harder it, than flesh. And to give it a bad bruise. <laughs> bad bruise. Uh, I thought, I didn't know Nottingham was, like, so there's a Nottingham forest. Yep. And it, I, I believe. It's also the name of a Premier League football. Well, not Premier League anymore. I believe Long, Nottingham is the team. murder capital of England. Is it? I believe it is. I would assume that would have been further north. Uh, <laughs> murder. Most murders. Yeah, it's gonna I mean, be people. That was a time where like, we would refer to it as shotting him. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, there, I guess, domestic violence, knife crime, made up more than 70% of incidents reported to the police. Damn. So they made no-point knives. It'd be funny if they made, like, no-point bullets. Because, <laughs> like, no one uses knives that in America. That would give you a really bad bruise, Chris. <laughs> if you got shot with a bullet that was blunt, <laughs> what a black eye you'd get from Jesus that. Jesus Christ. Well, it's like, I mean, sometimes, like, they use less lethal bullets, like rubber bullets and yeah. stuff. It's kind of like the same, the <laughs> They're same concept. Dull, right? They're made of a different material. <laughs> They've just not got a tip on them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, a bullet without a tip might not fly the same. <laughs> like, it would have weird air resistance. It so might, like, tumble, but I assume. Fly off in if it, really, 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 like, fat, thin bullet. I mean, people used to just fire balls, didn't they? And they would still kill people. Yeah, yeah. they were not accurate at all. <laughs> yeah, if it hit you, though, they'd still be done for. It's true. I, uh, but I guess that, that, that's why people lined up or armies lined up when they fought. It's like, we, we, we got to feel like we're hitting something. <laughs> I knew a guy that went to like a demonstration in I was like Ireland or something like that. And they were like f at a distance watching this like basically riot take place. And then the riot police came out. And like one of the guys turned to the other. He's like, do you think we're going to be okay here? And he's like, yeah, we'll be fine. And then they just heard like a bang and the guns had the, the cops had brought out rubber bullets and like they saw a rubber bullet just bounce down the street and just take one of them in the shoulder like, ah, oh! and they're like, we should leave. <laughs> they just got nailed yeah, by a right. rubber bullet just watching from afar. Oh, he's lucky oh, it man. hit him in the shoulder, not in the head. Yeah, no fucking shit. That would have hurt. I got hit by a baseball on the shoulder. I think I told this it's story. Like the same thing. I was saying a bit, I, I, when I go to sports events when I was a kid, I didn't watch sports. I like playing my Game Boy or something. Why'd you go? Like, huh? Why were you there? Because it's like I, my dad was taking us to see a baseball game. Why don't you have some damn respect? Well, I still would watch it some, but like also, <laughs> you know, so it was like. But also Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I remember it was like, look up, and I was like, bam! And just like hitting the shoulder with a baseball, and they came out and they were like, someone took it from me. Oh. It bounced off my shoulder, and some dude was like, ah, I caught it! <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? I was in, like, second grade or third grade, I don't know. I think I'd feel bad about, like, taking a bullet hit like an yeah. eight-year-old kid. <laughs> it bounced off, and so the, the lady a lady came out who worked at the stadium and was like, oh, we got you this other baseball. 
and we're gonna get it signed by whoever hit you. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> whoever hit you. And then so the, yeah, I got like this signed baseball, at, and they were like super nice about it. I was like, people cool. get messed up at baseball games. Yeah, they're finally starting to put some netting up to try I to they prevent had netting, But I keep reading reports of like people are just, just pitching much up. faster but that's and the hitting fun harder, part. and it's like annihilating kids. That's the thing. Like some people love like the idea of like oh, I can catch a foul ball. You know, like that's a thing. They're, there's okay, so there's a, a okay. I love watching real sports on HBO, and there's an episode where they cover this. Actually, I think there's two episodes where they've talked about this, and uh, they they talk about that, like the you think the thrill of that, but the ball comes at you so fast, like you always need to be focused and paying attention to it. If you're even partially distracted, you cannot turn around, see that it's happened, and get a glove up in time, even if you think you're there for that. Like you need to be 100 percent focused. And to prove the point, they set up a simulation where. And the people are standing behind like plexiglass and they have uh, a pitching machine that throws the ball at them. And uh, Brian Gumbel is just standing there talking with them. And then it goes off and they don't need, they can't even turn in time before the ball, you know, would have hit them. It's like it's in the plexiglass. And the people are like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. There's no way you can turn in time. Jesus. Yeah. Really? And, so, so it, and if it hits a kid. Pokemon or, or no yeah. Pokemon, I was getting hit with that ball. <laughs> And they also they also talk they interview some adults as well who've been hit like in the head or have like serious medical issues now because of it. Seems like seems like an easy fix. You just put up some nets. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know. That's, that's what they do in Japan. <laughs> do they? Yeah. I used to be a ball boy for my dad's football team, uh, and I would just like be on the sidelines, be like these giant you know high school football players, and I'd be like this like scrawny like you know second or third grader, and sometimes. They would like have a catch, and then it would they would t get tackled onto the sidelines, and I would just be standing right there, just getting caught up in these like, <laughs> badges, <laughs> take it out as a child. And your dad's like, "That's my boy." That's my son. He took a hit. Is there any footage of that? I don't think so. No, but <laughs> I would love to see that. I would. Yeah, that was dangerous. God, I was I was around football shit all the time when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I, I, I played t-ball when I was in like when I was like four. All I did was draw in the dirt. That's it. The ball. I remember. Because I remember I was drawing in the dirt in the outfield. The ball rolled up and ruined my drawing. <laughs> like, and I was like, I was like, what's going on? And then everyone's yelling at me to throw the ball. I, I, I should not have been playing sports ever in my life. <laughs> my dad, he taught at this one high school in Rockwell, Texas. And they had a gymnasium that had like legit like gymnastics and stuff. And they had like a foam pit. And I remember him just being like, hey, go play. And so like that. I think he wanted me to be active. And I remember instead of doing like athletic shit, I dug a hole to the bottom of the foam pit by moving all the foam stuff. And I was just finding like loose change, jewelry, <laughs> lost cell phones. It was the fucking uh, best. It was like was a so Trevor Chain. It, it, oh, it totally Ooh. was, but I found so much cool shit. Did anyone there. else? I didn't, I never did this. I feel like the thing is like you hook up underneath the bleachers. Is that a thing? Did anyone else hook up with bleachers? I didn't do it. Nah. I never hooked you, up. I think you're bleachers. talking to the wrong crowd, dude. I, I never had a school with bleachers, dude. I had one girl, I remember I drove her to a dance and she was like, hey, hold on real quick. I'm going to change into uh, this dress. And then I was like, oh, okay. She was like in the passenger seat. And then I started looking off and she's like, oh, you can watch. And I was like, no, it's fine. <laughs> like, I was so <laughs> bad. She wanted you to watch. Yeah, I was so bad at picking up signals. And she was so <laughs> hot. I had such a crush on her, but I was just like, I love the idea of you being like this. You're like, no, hold on. And you just pull a curtain over. <laughs> it's like, that doesn't sound very safe. I need to focus on my driving. <laughs> no, we were parked. Like, we were ready to go uh, into the dance. She was like, you can watch. And I was like, no, nah, it's fine. I, I'll, I'll, I respect you. Do you think you. she was offended? Like, like you just you just said you disgust me. She didn't hang out with me the rest of the night, and I just remember being like, "Man, she was like really cool in the car. What's the deal?" <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I like the idea of ten years later, you're like, "Oh, oh damn it. shit!" I've had that before. Or like years later, I'm like, "What was? I? Oh my god, what was I thinking?" <laughs> All right, that's a good note to end on. Uh, all right, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys uh, again next week. Bye. YouTube, do you like the podcast? Keep going. Do you like watching Blaine Don't stop. dabbing nonstop for 90 minutes? <sighs> then you should like this video, and you should probably watch the other videos down below, which probably have less dabbing by Blaine. <laughs> Why not? You're here. Show it some love. <laughs> My head hurts. <laughs> Subscribe.